part, it's Jamie from Not So Wimpy Teacher. Let's chat about how to find time to teach writing when you don't have time. I mean, isn't that how it feels? You've got this list of standards to teach, so much reading, math, science, social studies, grammar, writing, and yet you're trying to squeeze it into these tiny pockets of time because you also got to have your recess and your lunch and your specials and RTI and I, I mean, it's never ending, right? I totally get it. I was there. And I went ahead and I scheduled my writing for the very last section of the day. And then we wouldn't have time, right? Because reading would go a little long or math would go a little long. And so we'd say, oh, we didn't have time today. It's okay, guys, we'll write tomorrow. Anyone ever do that? I realized after a lot of self-reflection that it wasn't as much about not having the time, but rather I didn't know what to do with the time. So I preferred, I felt more confident spending that time on reading or math. So yeah, if we were in the middle of a great reading lesson or a great chapter and I read aloud, I'd be like, let's just keep going because I was nervous about writing. I didn't really know how to teach it. I didn't really know what to do with my lesson. And to be real, it was always so chaotic when we did have writing workshop that I wasn't like, super excited to get to that part of my day. And so I almost was looking for ways that we could extend reading and math and skip writing at least a couple of times a week. And I'm, I'm, I'm so sad for that group of students, but it makes sense. If you really think about it, most of us didn't have very thorough instruction on how to teach writing as part of our college training to be a teacher. Maybe maybe you had literacy courses and writing was part of it, but for a lot of people, the focus was reading and math. And, and that's fine, um, but we are responsible for teaching writing. Not only is it a standard that our students are required and it's part of testing, but it's really a life skill they need. And writing makes them better with explaining their math. Writing makes them better at proving their understanding of their reading. Writing is necessary for the next grade level, for middle school, high school, college, writing college essays, and for most jobs are going to have to have some writing involved. So we can't just skip it. And we know this, deep down we know this. And we felt a little guilty about it. And we're like, well, there's just not enough time. I don't have time. So let's chat about how we can at least squeeze a little more time out of our day, okay, for writing. All right, first and foremost, how long do we have to have for writing? <laughs> That's a question I get a lot. I recommend setting aside at least 30 minutes for your writing workshop. Not grammar, not spelling, writing workshop. This might sound crazy to you right now because you're like, there's no time, Jamie, there's no time. But 30 to 45 minutes is ideal. So at least 30 minutes, at least start there. If you don't have time for any writing, let's at least start with trying to find 30 minutes. Um, I know it sounds hard, I, it, I do. But I wanna give you a few tips that might make it easier for you to find that time in your schedule next year. And then I will continue to help you to feel more confident about what to teach during that time so that you will protect the time. Okay, first and foremost, I want you to do a time audit. I actually do time audits um, quite often because I find it increases my productivity. So as teachers, you lesson plan, right? You decide exactly what you're gonna do with your hour of math and your hour of reading and science. And I could ask you like, hey, what's happening in your classroom at 9.43 in the morning? And you would know exactly what's happening. But I want you not just to write down the schedule you put on the board, right? The one that says from eight to nine, we do math and nine to 10, we do reading. I don't want that schedule. I want you to be honest. No one's gonna see the schedule. You don't have to show me, you don't have to show your principal, no one. What really happens in your classroom? I want you to include everything. Transition minutes, times it takes to walk somewhere, like recess, or how long it takes to get materials out, to clean up, um, your classroom management, how much time is spent with that, because there's more to your day than just reading, writing, math, science, and social studies, right? There is, and I know this, and you know this, so I want this to be a realistic time audit of how you are spending each minute in the classroom. This is not meant to make you feel guilty, because you have to do most of this stuff, but we can't start looking for minutes until we're realistic with how those minutes are being spent right now. Because some things we might be able to make shorter or eliminate, but we have to know what we're doing first. So do a time audit. 
and really pay attention to how you're spending minutes during the school day. Now, I want you to look at that time audit after you've done it, and I want you to be very honest about must-dos versus may-dos. That's a term we use with our kids, but it's a great term for us too. Um, we slowly will add in things into our schedule, and it's, I think you, you do this, it helps make your classroom fun, it makes teaching fun for you, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I want us to be looking and cognizant of must-dos versus may-dos. So a must-do, math, reading. May-dos might be bell work, or maybe you've added a certain type of program. Maybe it's class meetings. These are may-dos, and I'm not saying you have to get rid of them all, but it's nice to color code it so that you remember that you do have some flexibility in your schedule. And sometimes when we look at the schedule, we start to see like, oh, I've added a lot of things over time. And I want you to be honest with yourself and say, which of these things really helps my students to grow? Because your classroom needs that. Your classroom needs culture. So maybe you're like, class meetings, I have to have them. They're a must do for me and my classroom. But you know what? That bell work takes a lot longer than I thought it would take. It's eating up, it's eating into our math time, which is making math eat into other times. So you know what? We're just going to do one warm up problem instead of a spiral review worksheet. I want you to just look through all of those may do's and make some decisions about which ones are the most important to you in your classroom because writing needs to be a must do, not a may do, okay? So that's a, a first step, but then let's talk about some time saving ideas. One of the ways that you can save the most time in your classroom is revisiting routines and procedures. So we teach them at the beginning of the year and generally teachers don't spend nearly as much time on it if they need to. And the reason they don't is because they feel this pressure. Like, I got to get to all the, the content. I got to get to the curriculum, um, you know, testing, all these things. But the longer you spend perfecting routines and procedures in your classroom, the more time you will save all year. So taking extra time at the beginning of the year is going to save you time all year. You're going to get to teach more. So this is a big deal. So I want you to even think about your routines and procedures now for next year. You wanna think about ways to make it faster for students. So what are the fastest ways you can handle pencil sharpening? Um, you wanna make sure that materials are spread across the room in a way that makes sense so that there's a rotation so everyone isn't going to the same area pushing and shoving to get to places. So maybe the, you have backpack cubbies and you find it takes a long time for them to put their backpacks away because they're waiting. Everyone's in the same spot. Can you spread them out? Are supplies spread out so that it's easier to get them? How many supplies can they keep in their desk or at their table so that there's less time spent doing that? And then when school starts, how will you teach those procedures so that they are quick. We can't, I think over time we just sort of allow our students to transition a certain way. Like, ah, that's just the way they transition. That doesn't have to be the way. So when I teach procedures, I love to set goals. Like this is how long it'll take us to transition between subject areas. And we get to the point where we can do it. Like we practice, we compete, we um, every day try to get better than we were the day before. I make it a priority in my classroom. And I want you to think about this. If math started just five minutes earlier, because you got routines and procedures down so well, you would save yourself 25 minutes over the course of one school week. That's why it's so important. So if you're struggling with enough time in the day to teach your major subjects, routines and mastering those routines can give you a few minutes here or there that really add up. So take some time to think about how your classroom is set up, what types of routines you have in place, which ones are taking too long. You can look at your time audit and be like, ooh, getting ready for reading is taking too long. So then you can start brainstorming. Like, Okay, what, what about it's taking too long? They're going to the library to get books. That's taking too long. Could they pick up their books during snack time? Or um, is there another way that I can spread the books a little more so there's not big clumps? What can I do to make this process faster? And then I want you to plan those first two weeks of school to include so much routines and procedures. Coming up with ways to make it fun and turn it into a game and a competition is great, but we don't want to move on before students have really gotten it down. And then you're going to have to come back and practice them when you notice your students start to slack a little bit, which they will occasionally. Okay, so transitions. Make sure you're timing them and put the time up on the board. This is a way to continue to make sure that students aren't wasting time between their um, 
their subject areas, but I also want you to think about your transitions too. So I used to do this. We had recess in the afternoon and it was supposed to be 15 minutes, but sometimes I'd be like, ah, the weather's so nice. I'm gonna stay out a little bit longer. I mean, the kids are get, getting along well. No one's getting in trouble, the weather's nice. And so we'd stay out 25 minutes. And that 10 minutes comes from somewhere. It would usually come from writing because of course I put it last. So it's the easiest thing to take from. So I want you to think about how fast are you bringing students in at recess or specials? Are you picking them up from specials on time or are you the teacher who's a few minutes late every day? These minutes add up very quickly. So not just your student transitions, but yours too. It's, it's tough, but by sticking to your schedule, you will be able to confidently teach each of the subjects, which will make you feel really good when you go home every day, okay? Another way I found to save a ton of time is making sure you're prepared for the entire day each morning before students come. And this is what I mean by this. So early on, um, I wouldn't have everything out. I mean, I was just lucky I had lesson plans really and that's okay that's the that's where I was in my teaching journey at the time but I noticed I wasted a lot of time like okay wait a minute I gotta go get that website and I'd turn my back to them and, and pull up the website I needed and then uh, you know there's a behavior incident and I gotta go manage that and then I'm like oh wait I gotta go get my book and I go get it off the shelf and I gotta find the page number and oh I, I know I photocopied those worksheets let me find them they're in here and that wasted a ton of time and it it really opened up the class, they were bored waiting on me. So then there's more talking and, and makes some transitions even longer. So before students walk in in the morning, have everything out. And so put it in a pile in the order you're going to need it. Teacher guides, open straight to the page you're going to need. Your read aloud book, any lesson plans, worksheets, just put them in the order you'll need them. Open up any PowerPoints or websites on your computer, have them all ready to go for the day, or at least for the first half of the day, and then you can set up the second half of the day on your plan period or your lunch. I usually set up the whole day because I knew that the odds of me getting back to it weren't great. But this actually saves a ton of minutes. And um, make sure your class just run a lot smoother too. So I know these are just sound like minor things, working on your, your must-haves and, and may-dos and um, working on transitions and routines and procedures and being more prepared. But I will tell you that can probably already give you 10 to 15 minutes. Now, I want to give you some sample schedules. We asked a whole bunch of teachers from our writing masterclass program. They've, they've fit writing into their schedule and we asked them to share their schedules with us. And I don't know about you, but I kind of geek out over looking at other people's schedules. So we took a bunch of different types of schedules and we put them all into one guide for you. So these are all schedules that include writing workshop as well as all the other subjects. There's even some that are for teachers who are only teaching maybe literacy or literacy and social studies. There's schedules that include extras like there was teachers in our group who have um, religion or mass that they have to go to. And so we put all these schedules into one free guide for you to look at. I want you to get inspired by some of these schedules. And instead of saying, that would never work for me, I want you to say, how could I make that work for me? So, all right, link to that free guide. Go ahead and grab that from the description and download it today. I, I'm hoping you're going to either find your perfect schedule or find the schedule that inspires your perfect schedule for next year. So, let me know how you are fitting writing into your schedule, how many minutes you're able to spend. I love to learn more about that. And if you're interested, our writing masterclass is opening up this month, which I'm so excited. We only open it once a year. So we've been waiting um, for a year. It's opening this month on June 21st. And it is an pro online professional development course that you get to watch at your own pace. You have lifetime access. You get to watch at your own pace. So. You don't have to be available at a certain day or time. And it will take you from chaotic writing workshop that you don't look forward to, to being a confident writing teacher who has students who are excited about writing and are growing. That's what our masterclass is all about. It's for um, teachers who teach in grades two through five. So I'm also going to include in the description a link to that wait list so that you don't miss out. Because like I said, we only open once a year. So you got two things to do. Grab that guide with the sample schedules and get yourself on the wait list. All right, can't wait to chat with you more about how to confidently teach writing. Have a not so wimpy day.